Me and James have been making bike fit videos on this channel for a long time now, but we've never really put all the information into one place. Today's video is going to be the basics on how to get a perfect bike fit. Book a fit with you. Yeah. Pretty much every bike I get through here, the handlebars are too wide. So if you consider that the averages in, in the bike industry, 52, 54, 56 centimetre bikes, they all come with a 42 centimetre handlebar. 90% of the men that I fit are, when we measure them, we're gonna show you how to measure in a minute, measure between 39 and 41 centimetres. This renders a 42 too wide. The problem with a handlebar that's too wide is it creates a plethora of issues. We can link numb hands to it, neck and shoulder issues, an inability to reach the brake levers because you're reaching around the handlebar, the bar that's wider than you to get at the brake levers. Gonna get Chris in. So we're gonna measure across a chromium process. It's the distal part of the scapula. Measure across that point and Chris measures 34 centimeters. So he's a really skinny guy. Most men, like I said a minute ago, are gonna measure between 39 and 41 centimeters. Very, very broad individuals as wide as 44, 46 to 46. Women tend to measure anywhere between 32, very, very narrow, so a very slight individual, all the way up to generally 38 is about as broad as, you, as women tend to get. And what we're looking to do, and it's pretty simple, is align the shoulder width with the handlebar width. On the grounds that nobody walks around like this. So why do we want to ride our bike like this? Typical symptoms of a handlebar that's too wide are rolling the wrist. So this is a means of aligning the wrist with the shoulder blade. So typically, uh, most riders tend to roll the wrist like so. What that results in is a perceived uh, amount of excessive pressure on the hands, typically results in numb hands, pins and needles, and, uh, and also neck and shoulder issues. Handlebar you can buy for as little as 20 pounds. Something that is worth noting is that the reach on all handlebars is not created equal. So, the distance between where the handle, where the control is mounted and where the center of the bore is. So, a data, zero, uh, a data RHM is 75 millimeters. You can get, I mean, there are certain OE handlebars, particularly the Bontrager uh, VRC bar, is like over 100 mil in the reach. So it's worth looking at the reach of the handlebar before you buy them. I would tend to recommend you buy a handlebar that's got a shorter reach because it's gonna result in a, uh, a reduction in, in the overall reach of the bicycle. Generally speaking, I find myself having to reduce reach rather than increase it. Furthermore, how you mount the control on the handlebar will have a massive impact on, on the overall reach of the bike. Get the drop absolutely vertical, and what that means is that you've got your handlebar set, make sure the bike is level on the ground as well, and you then wanna set your control up so, so that it's gotta have such a slight um, slope to it. You don't want the drop flat because what we're trying to do is avoid you having to roll the wrist in order to sit on the hood properly, okay? Handlebars, sorted. Most consumers, saddle heights are too high. A lot of bike fitters tend to set saddles too high. Uh, we have physiotherapists to thank for that, but don't get me on that soapbox. Basically, saddle height is a balancing act between not overextending the leg through the bottom of the stroke and not impinging the hip through the top. There isn't really a, a general rule of thumb in order to set saddle height. There are many methods that you'll read online about. Most of them are, f are massively flawed. Basically, what we're looking for is fluidity and smoothness through the bottom of the stroke with the saddle set as high as possible without you having to reach through the bottom of the stroke. By that I mean you're not having to point the toes. Saddle height or excessive saddle height is probably along with excessive reach which we're going to cover in a minute is the single most common cause for pain in cycling. I'm talking knee pain, saddle issues, weight on the hands. Basically I can relate almost foot problems, I can relate almost any cycling ailment to saddle height. And like I said, I would say 70 to 80% of the people that I have coming through here, the saddle is too high. Millimeters don't make a difference. A difference of a two millimeter in saddle height reduction is the difference between you sitting here and you sitting there. Having said all of that, that I'm starting to see strong correlations with problems at saddles that, that are excessively low as well, because what you do is you typically impinge the hip through the top of the stroke. It becomes very difficult to get over the top of the stroke. This, more often than not, results in an asymmetric interaction, as does excessive saddle height. Usually human beings have one hip that is tighter than another, and as a result, that tighter hip serves a precedent to push a rider over to the, uh, the opposing side. There is, there's a window there, it's, nobody has a one millimeter perfect saddle height, uh, but it is worth experimenting with. It has a massive impact on, like I say, comfort on the bike, mu muscle optimization, and also how the bike rides. When it's too high, it tends to result in lots of weight on the front of the bike as well. When it comes to choosing saddles, they aren't as subjective as they're made out to be. 
In fact, there isn't just one saddle to rule them all. I've got six bikes, they're all different saddles. Saddle fitting has become problematic. Uh, the, the, I, have quite, I quite often find saddles are too wide. My best selling saddle is this, actually, which is a Sedatalia SLR Boost S3. This is the narrowest one. Contrary to what you might read about measuring sit bones, I think the fundamental with saddle choice is that it should have a pressure relief channel. Not 100% of the time, but nine times out of 10, if you think about how we were intended, depending on your religious beliefs, we were intended to run, jump, climb trees. We were not on, intended, we were not intended to sit on our genitals on hard pieces of foam. When you have a saddle that lacks any pressure relief, what tends to result in is we either posteriorly rotate, so we roll the pelvis away, so common is this compensation that a certain saddle brand has developed a marketing strategy and saddle selection system. It's called spine concept. Posterior rotation of the pelvis is a means of getting away from, getting your soft tissue or erogenous tissue away from the set from the saddle, or we sit rotated, or we sit off to one side. Q saddle saws. Saddle saws are almost exclusively driven by saddle height, though, to be totally honest with you. But um, but yeah, ultimately, it needs to have a pressure relief channel. Secondly, this is my opinion. I don't believe in measuring sit bones. The way in which sit bones are measured, typically. You go in a bike shop, and this is, in my opinion, this has been driven by a big American bike brand who will remain anonymous to make the sale of saddles feel a bit more sciencey. What they do is they measure your sit bones, your ischial tuberosities. The problem is they measure them like this, and you don't sit on a bike like this. They're taking the measurement when the when the pelvis is in a posterior state. What happens when you ride a bicycle is it's in an anterior state, which means that you aren't actually loading the area that you're measuring. Almost always it tends to result in the happening the saddle being too wide. Now, consider this. If you've got something this wide in between your legs, imagine how comfortable it would be to walk around with it. It wouldn't be. So why would we want to ride a bike with it? Sorry, Specialized, to call you out on this. It's not, not specifically related to this saddle. Um, but when the saddle is too wide, riders typically gravitate to the nose as a means of trying to clear that width um, because you tend to catch the width of the saddle or the wings of the saddle on your thighs. So like I said, it's human nature to kind of try and get away from that pressure, or away from that abrasion. As a generalization, anything over 145 mil wide, nine times out of 10, I would say it was too wide, personally, but not always. This is, this is the problem with bike fitting is that there is no rule of thumb, there is no generalization. It is all about the specific needs of an individual. Just because one of you out there has got 155 mil saddle and you're very happy with it, great, good for you, but I'm telling you that the general rule is saddles being too wide tend to result in a gravitation to the nose, which on a saddle like this, which is noseless, is fairly problematic. Forget about what the industry tells you. This is the single most important part of your equipment. It's more important than your carbon wheels. It's more important than your electronic group set. I would almost go as far as to say it's more important than your bike. This is where all the power goes. And frankly, if this is wrong, you're gonna create a litany of problems, all right? The first key to getting this right is you've gotta buy a shoe that fits. Now, forgive the glaringly obvious statement, the shoe does have to fit. So when you're gonna buy a pair of shoes, it pays to go somewhere where they understand your feet and they measure your feet. So for instance, in, in our shop, we, uh, we have a shoe fitting service where we assess, measure, and uh, measure your feet, and then we provide a shoe that is specifically intended for that foot. Rather than just going, oh, can I try these on in a size 10? But you're not 10, you're an eight with wide feet. If you can't get to me or a similar business, then uh, one good way of doing it might be to just buy a load of them online. That's pretty difficult to, to get really good results with. I have this preference with Lake. I mean, I, I, I sell a lot of Lake on the grounds that uh, every shoe model is different. And this is kind of the problem with Lake. It's, it's the best thing about them, but it's also the worst thing about them. In the, uh, this shoe, the CX238, is their widest shoe. The next model up, CX332, is the narrowest shoe. Unfortunately with Lake, you can't just go out and buy a pair of Lakes just because I say they're good and assume that they're gonna be right because it requires understanding in order to, to fit it properly. If you have wide feet, buy a wide fitting shoe. Number one golden rule, do not size up to accommodate the width of your feet. Because what that means is the cleat location will end up further forward, cue, foot problems, knee issues, and probably saddle issues as well. Skinny feet, buy a narrow fitting shoe. Wide feet, buy a wide fitting shoe. And secondly, you've got cleat location. This is more a testament to how shoes are designed than it is my bike fitting attitudes. Um, I find myself having to take, take the cleat as far back on the shoe as it'll go 
almost always. Depends on the shoe, depends on the foot, but the safest way of getting this good and offloading the, the delicate structure of the forefoot and you've know, got a very dense capillary structure there is to take the cleat as far back on the shoe as it'll go. If your saddle height is too high, and you take your cleat further back, you're extending your legs more. So if you take the cleat further back and it feels worse, and your saddle height, your, your saddle feels worse, guess what? Your saddle's way too high. So first and foremost, get the cleat as far back as it'll go. If you are a larger rider, it might be worth pushing that cleat inboard. This is the left foot, left shoe, and we're pushing that cleat in to get the foot away from the bike. Stance is a really effective way of, of making your feet comfortable. Get a good pair of shoes. I prefer carbon soles. Uh, get the cleat as far back as on the shoe as it'll go and you should be more comfortable. So particularly common in, in road cycling because of the way that we like our bikes to look. We like long stems and we like the saddle to, to look really high and all this kind of stuff. All road cyclers seem to be contortionists. It's also something that I'm starting to find in bicycle design is that bikes tend to be too long for consumers. The reach of the handlebars along with saddle height is probably the, the, one of the main causes for pain in cycling, um, particularly with regards to hand, neck and shoulder issues, and also saddle issues. So something that we very commonly see, and in fact it's the most common compensation for an excessive reach, is for a rider to gravitate to the nose of the saddle. Now, going back to what we were talking about earlier with regards to saddle issues, is that saddle issues have got nothing to do with saddles really, it's more to do with how you're interacting with them. So if you're sat on the nose of it, that's dysfunctional. It's, off, it's not offering you support, it's not providing you any amount of stability and ultimately you're going to end up with neck and shoulder issues and hand issues because you're going to be going to the front of the bike. Furthermore, you're talking about sitting on a very, very narrow portion of the saddle, which, as I say, massively dysfunctional. So we want to be setting the reach based on your ability and the saddle height, come to think of it, on your ability to sit at the back of the saddle. Right, we're engaging with the widest portion of the saddle. That's fundamentally it. Ways of reducing reach, we've kind of touched on it with handlebars. You can reduce the reach of the handlebar, you can reduce the stem length, and you can reduce the setback in the saddle. Be careful with reducing the saddle setback too much because what that can start to do is disrupt your center of mass and your weight distribution. It can have the negative impact of throwing all of your weight into the front of the bike. That was basically every Bike Fit Tuesdays episode in one. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you want to book a fit with James, he's based in Richmond in London. Links will be in the description down below to his website. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys soon for more episodes of Bike Fit Tuesdays.